Hello, this is Eric Chappell, author of AutoCAD Civil 3D 2014 Essentials, and this is the Essentials and Beyond exercise for Chapter 7. In this exercise, we're actually just completing what we started earlier in the chapter. For the Madison Lane and Logan Court alignments, we're going to create a surface profile from the EG surface, then create a profile view for each one, create a layout profile, that's step three, Step four is to round off the station and elevation values of each PVI to the nearest five foot. We talked about that earlier in the chapter about how it's just good design practice to use round values when available. And then finally we want to check our profiles against the subdivision, subdivisions design check set to make sure there aren't any issues with that. So let's start off with step one which is to create a surface profile using the EG surface. So I'll go to the Home tab of the ribbon, and under Profile, I'll launch the Create Surface Profile command. Jordan Court is already done. You can see the profiles listed down here. So we'll go to Madison Lane and add that EG Surface Profile. Now, normally, in a production environment, you would just go ahead and move on to drawing it in the profile view. But I want to do the steps in the order that they're laid out in the exercise. So I'm going to click OK here. And nothing happens in the drawing that we can see, but some data has been created. A profile has been generated, at least the data for it, in the background for the Madison Lane alignment. So next I'll do the surface profile for Logan Court as well. Logan Court, EG surface, and again I'll just click OK. So that takes care of step one for Madison Lane and Logan Court. Step two is to create a profile view using default style and band settings. So go to profile view, create profile view. That brings up the create profile view wizard. I'm going to base, uh, base this on Madison Lane first and I'm going to accept all defaults for everything else and just jump right to create profile view. So there's the Madison Lane profile view. You can see the style is a little bit different than what was previously, previously there for Jordan Court. We'll do the same thing for Logan Court, Create Profile View, accept all the defaults, and I'll drop that in right here. So now we've got Madison Lane, and we've got Logan Court, and that's fa that satisfies Step 2. For Step 3, we want to create a layout profile that roughly matches the existing ground profile. So to do that, I'll go to my Profile dropdown, and we'll say Profile Creation Tools. Select the profile grid. We have to uh, give the software some information about what we're doing. I'm going to accept the defaults here and say the style and the label set are good. That brings up the toolbar, the profile layout tools toolbar. And probably the easiest way to do this is to just to jump right into the draw tangents with curves command. I'm going to snap to the beginning of the existing ground profile to start. And the instructions say, and this is typically how, how you go about designing these, try to keep it as close to existing ground as possible so that you're not cutting or filling too much and really driving up the cost of constructing this road. I'll repeat the command for Logan Court. Again, accept the defaults there. Even though I'm going to pick the draw tangents with curves command, there's really no need for curves. We can almost do a straight line from the beginning of Logan Court to the end, and that'll get us started. So that satisfies step three, which is to create a layout profile that roughly matches the existing ground profile. Step four, we want to round off the station and elevation values of the PVIs to the nearest five feet or one meter if you're working at this in metric for station, or half a foot, quarter of a meter in elevation. So to do that, I'll click on, we'll start with the, the uh, Madison Lane profile, I'll click on the profile and hit Geometry Editor and then the Grid View button. And I'll take a look at some of the values that I see here for station and elevation. So first station is zero, first elevation is 193. Now I'm going to let the first and last elevations and stations alone because there are the very start and the very end and we're also tying into uh, existing ground at those locations. 
but in between here I see 3 plus 3390 let's let's go with 335 for that and 190.749 let's go with 191 for that remembering that PVI is to the nearest 5 foot and elevation is going to be or I'm sorry station to the nearest 5 feet elevation to the nearest half a foot 544 is going to become 545 elevation 177.5 of course you're going to get different values because I hand-picked the points on the screen so the starting value is going to be different and, and the ending values as well because you're going to be rounding to the nearest uh, for each case 72284 is going to become 725 notice I don't have to punch in the plus sign 174.5 will take care of the elevation alright so that takes care of Madison Lane and for Logan Court both of my PVIs are, I've got one at the beginning and one at the end, so I'm not going to adjust those because they're actually where they need to be. Finally, for our last step, we need to ensure that the profile meets the criteria of the subdivision design check set. So I'll click the profile for Jordan or for Madison Lane, and I'll go to Profile Properties, and I want to check out the Design Criteria tab tell it to use criteria based design we're not interested in a design criteria file but we are interested in a check set called subdivision I'll click OK and I want to look for any warning symbols and I see one right here so I'll hover over it tangent grade must be between half percent and five percent so I'm wondering it looks kinda steep it must be just a little bit too steep so I'm gonna pull this PVI up a little bit see if that makes the tangent the uh, warning symbol disappear and I had to pull it up quite a bit and that actually made the other one next to it up here now when I get it to this location I see that it takes the warning symbols away but it's also pretty much straight so instead of having these this extra PVI in here I'm gonna simplify this design and I'll go to my geometry editor and say I want to delete that PVI. Now again, you may get some something completely different for your solution because you, um, you know, you again we handpicked the points. Now I notice that I also have a lot of fill in this area, so I probably would look at that a little more closely to try to eliminate that excess fill because that's going to cost a lot of money to bring the earth in to fill that uh, fill that location in. Logan Court, we can do the same click on that click profile properties design criteria we'll turn on criteria based design but we'll not we won't use a design criteria file and we do see a warning symbol there it looks like maybe we're less than half a percent so even though our goal here is to tie into existing ground we still have to meet our design criteria so I'm gonna make this a little bit steeper and a little bit was all it took to uh, to take the warning symbol away. So that satisfies step five, and that concludes the Essentials and Beyond exercise for Chapter 7.